Good afternoon, everyone. 250 millibar jet stream crossed over from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere over the equator. This happened on the 28th and 29th of the month. Different filter here so you can see it more clearly. The stratospheric zonal winds behaving incredibly strangely. Hadley cell, if it does push further north, is going to usher in a drought in Europe and it's going to green the deserts of Africa. NCEP puts 8 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures across the Antarctic Peninsula, yet record cold across that same area throughout the month. Don't know how that can be. Potsdam Institute, solar physicist now coming out, saying that we are indeed heading into a grand solar minimum. European climate models, 86% wrong in their precipitation forecasts. It's something that will make you shake your head. They're cutting down 15,000 trees to put in an amusement park, but they're cutting them down to put solar panels in there. New article out today showing the 250 millibar jet stream crossing from the northern hemisphere over the equatorial winds into the southern hemisphere and joining that band down there. Green circle to the far right, you can see the flow coming across. That was on the 28th. This is on the 29th. Bit closer look for you here. Really pronounced on the 28th. I changed filters here so you can see on the 29th. Again, the green circle is where you're looking in the crossover from northern to southern hemisphere. So what it looked like on the 28th, it moved a tiny bit, not as strong. Different filter, black and white, you can easily see where the crossover is occurring. Now the different bands of cloud circulation, the Hadley cell is what they're worried about, moving more north, ushering in a drought in Europe, yet greening the deserts in Africa. Interesting timing as this has happened in history before where the northern African areas turned into savanna grasslands, but China's massive investments in that same area. Do you think they know where the weather's going to change with their thousands of years of historical records of climate? The oscillation of equatorial winds, stratospheric zonal winds specifically, bent completely out of shape. Something that's never been before witnessed is happening with this zone. And it's showing the same occurrence in the 50 millibar. Just a different view here of the same zonal winds from 70 to 10 millibars. Taking a look around at the 30 millibar wind forecast, you can see how it's twisting and something is definitely off versus the last 40 years of data. Seems to be bending at 50 west for some reason. Again, continuing into the article, they say that since the wind's being pulled down from the equator that it's warming up the peninsula of Antarctica. This is from NECP, showing the differential of 8 degrees Celsius, yet at the same time throughout the month, it's been record cold temperatures down there. A glimpse into the Arctic air being pushed up into southern South America around Chile. A jump down onto the peninsula itself, 18.9 below Celsius. Temperature monitoring stations are pretty sparse across the entire peninsula to determine that it's truly 8 degrees Celsius above normal, perhaps in one particular spot, but to put that entire area in red. There's only 50 stations for the entire continent. And looking over at Greenland, there's actually more stations on Iceland than there are on Greenland, yet they keep telling us they have all these measurements. Over the last few years, there has been a little bit of warming up in the peninsula, but that's due to underwater volcanic activity. A look at the number of volcanoes, active volcanoes that are under sea or under ice across the western part of Antarctica and the peninsula. A dive in on the map in case you want to take a closer look. These are the actual volcanic ridges underwater at the Drake Pass. Temperatures going back to 1979 for both Arctic and Antarctic. You can see there's undulations. And if you like colors better, from 2005 for the last 10 years until now, you can see where it's warmed or cooled during that particular time. It's especially showing a lot more blue and cooler over these last two years. Shifting gears, Potsdam Institute now their solar physicists are saying that we're going into a grand solar minimum. But then take on top of this, the European climate models are 86% wrong for their precipitation. They were saying it's going to dry out, but now there's more rain than ever up there. 9% below normal 
sunlight coverage because there's so many clouds. And to top it all off, the silliness of the week, Six Flags is going to cut down 15,000 trees to install a solar array inside their theme park. They say that it's 31 times more CO2 emission reductions than keeping the trees there. I wonder what's going to actually make our oxygen for us. Do you think we're going to have to pay them to process CO2 out of the atmosphere back into our breathable oxygen and buy it out of the bottle eventually? These guys cutting down this many trees for solar panels? Come on.